From Pythagoras to Morthagoras, a journey of a few thousand years in just a few moments with me, Colonel Alan M. Morris. We'll take a look at this a squared plus b squared equals c squared thing that Pythagoras came up with a couple thousand years ago, and uh, we'll work a couple of practice examples after we take a look at a few things. Here we have a right triangle. This right triangle has uh, the, we, we denote this right triangle, the sides, the edges of this right triangle here uh, by calling them A, B, and the hypotenuse is always called C, and uh, A is a leg, B is a leg, and C is the hypotenuse. Uh, when we're talking about a right triangle, we don't refer to these as the sides, we refer to them as a leg, a leg, and a hypotenuse. And we'll get back to the A squared plus B squared equals C squared thing. And uh, take a look at this here. What happens now is Pythagoras had this idea that if he had a right triangle, if he took this length right here, which we'll call A, and if he made a square out of that A, then he had this area right here. And so he would refer to this as just A squared. And if he took this length right here and he made a square out of that length right here, then he would call that B squared. And, and what he and, and actually a bunch of others uh, discovered too was that the total area here plus the total area here was always equal to the total area here if you uh, had a right triangle. Now he got this square simply by taking the length of the hypotenuse making it be the other side of the length of a square, and that gave him this area. So a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And uh, we can take a look at that here. I made this little model here where I can use nine marbles. And so I have nine marbles here. This is one, two, three. And so three times three is nine, so I have nine marbles. And here I have the, the b. I have one, two, three, four marbles. So four times four is 16. Well, it turns out that Nine, time, no, no, 9 plus 16 is equal to 25. And as you can see, I move the 9 marbles over here. I have plenty of room for the other 16. And so we stick those in. And all 25 marbles, 9 plus 16, fit in the area that's a square by the hypotenuse. And so there you can see, and we'll back that up and take a look at that again. So here I have nine marbles, here I have 16 marbles. Nine is just three times three, and 16 is just four times four. And uh, punch those along, and I wind up with all of the 25 marbles fitting into the area, filling the area that's the size of the square of the hypotenuse. All right, let's take a more graphic look at, at that here. And I have the same right triangle at which we looked a little earlier. And here we have the A. And the length of this side is 3. And if I make a square out of 3, 3 times 3 is 9. And so I wind up having 9 squares here. And this length right here is 4. And so 4 times 4 is 16. So I wind up with 16 squares here. And so A is just 3 squared. And 3 squared is simply just 9. And then b is just 4 squared. And 4 squared is 16. And uh, 9 plus 16 equals 25. And so if we take a look at that, here the length of the hypotenuse 5 is simply just 5 squared. And 25 and 5 squared are the same thing. So we have 25 squares here. And, and that's what Pythagoras figured out. So. Let's take a, a look at this now. Here we have the uh, a is just 3, and b is 4. And so a squared is 9, and b squared is 16. And 9 plus 16, you see here again, we have 9 squares that are red. Those were the 9 that came from over here. And 16 squares that are blue. Those are the ones that came over here. All right, so a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, as you saw with the marbles. OK, but what do we really know about a square? Well, it turns out we know a lot of things about a square. Uh, here we have a square that's uh, 4 by 4, so the 1, 2, 3, 4 units long by 1, 2, 3, 4 units long. 4 times 4 is 16, so we have 16 smaller squares, so 4 times 4 is 16. And uh, we can rewrite 4 as the square root of 16. So if I have a square and I know what its area is, the length of one side is the square root of the area. That is, the area of this larger square here is 16 units squared. So the length of the side is the square root of 16. It's also 4, but uh, we can rewrite 4 as the square root of 16. If we know the area of a square, then we know the length of its sides. 
For example, here we have a larger red square. I've kind of highlighted that in red for you. And it's 3 by 3. 3 times 3 is 9. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We have 9 squares here. So this larger red square that I had has a large area of 9 units squared. And 9 units squared is the same thing as 3 times 3 or the square root of 9. So I can rewrite the 3 as being the square root of 9. And so our area we know is 3 times 3 is square root of 9. This 3 right here can be rewritten as the square root of 9. And this 3 right here can be rewritten as the square root of 9. So if we know the area of a square, then we know the length of its sides. All right. So let's take a look at uh, another square. Here we have a square that's 2 by 2. We could say that it also is uh, 4 units squared. And the length of the sides are the square root of 4, because its area is 4 units squared. And so 4, we have the, the length of this side here, uh, is the square root of 4, also known as 2. And 2 times 2 is 4, so the total area of our square is 4 units squared. Here we have a 1. And so if we have a 1, that means our area is uh, also 1 unit squared. We're multiplying length in two different directions. That's why we get the unit squared. So if I have this length times this length right here, I wind up getting area. And that's why it's units squared. So 1 can be rewritten as the square root of 1. So if we have the 1 times 1 is equal to uh, 1 unit squared. And the square root of 1 times the square root of 1 is also equal to 1 unit squared. Here we have 1 square unit. So if we know the area of a square, then we know the length of its sides. So here we have a square. We know its area is 1 unit squared. What is the length of the side here? Well, if you thought the square root of 1, you got it right. Okay. If we have a square and we know that the area of the square is 4 units squared, what is the length of the side? It's the square root of 4. You could have said 2, but you could also say it's the square root of 4 because the square root of 4 and the number 2 live exactly at the same place on the number line. If we have a square and it is 9 units squared, we know that the length of this side here is exactly the square root of 9. All right, that one was uh, fairly easy, especially because the square root of 9 we know to be 3. But what if we're dealing with something like the square root of, uh, the square root of 10? In other words, our square, we happen to know, has the area of 10 units squared. Well, that means the length of this side is also the square root of 10. If we have a square and we know that it is 55 units squared, well, the length of this side happens to be exactly the square root of 55. If we have a square and we know the area of the square is 77.2 units squared, then we know the length of the side is exactly 77.2 units long. If we have a square and we know that the area of the square is exactly one half unit squared, the length of this side is the square root of one half. How you find the square root of one half is a little beyond uh, this lesson, but uh, you can check my other lessons on YouTube and you will find that there is a lesson on finding square roots. All right, let's take a look at a right triangle, this thing that uh, Pythagoras used to uh, help him calculate the area of the hypotenuse if you knew the length of the other two sides. Or if you knew the length of the hypotenuse and you knew the length of one of the legs, then you could calculate the length of the other leg. And this right here, the 3, 4, 5 triangle, you can think of that as the, the king of all triangles. Uh, because it works out evenly that if this leg is 3 and this leg is 4, then the hypotenuse is 5. But I will say that this is the rock star of, of all triangles. It's the 3, 4, 5 triangle. But if you rewrite 3 as the length of, if you rewrite 3 as the length of the square root of 9, and you rewrite 4 as the length of the square root of 16, and you rewrite 5 as the square root of 25, 
Uh, some interesting things happen. So uh, 5 and the square root of 25 are the same number. 3 and the square root of 9 are the same number. And 4 and, six, and the square root of 16 are exactly the same numbers. So let's take a look at how this works. Here we have, I've made a little model here. Uh, let's just back up here. So I've made this little model. And what's nice about this little model is that it's very easy for you to draw this in the corner of the page so that it'll help you remember uh, a strategy of how that you calculate the length of the leg or when to add and subtract and that, that kind of stuff. So if you know, for example, the length of this leg and you know the length of this leg, you know this is 3 and this is 4. You know you can rewrite 3 as the square root of 9, and you know that you can write 4 as the square root of 16. Look at this. The number 9, not the square root 9, but the number that's under the square root sign here, plus the number that's under the square root sign here, add to the number that's under the square root sign here. If you don't know the length of this line right here, this leg right here, but you know the length of the hypotenuse, and you know the length of this leg, 25 minus 9, not the, not the square root of 25, just the number 25 minus the number 9 gives you 16. When you put 16 under a square root sign, that gives you the length of this side. So I believe that it's pretty uh, easy for you to make this little model on the side of your paper to help you figure some things out, and then you can look at the model and, and, and figure that out. You know that 3 can be rewritten as the square root of 9, and you know that 4 can be rewritten as the square root of 16, and you know that 5 can be rewritten as the square root of 25. Now you have the little model that can help you generate it. So now let's look at a few problems here. So you know the length of this side is the square root of 10, and you know the length of this side is the square root of 20. What's the, what's the length of the hypotenuse? Square root of 30. Now, square root of 30 is the perfect answer. However, we, it's an irrational number. We can only know it correct to so many decimal places. So the square root of 30 is uh, approximately, correct, or correct to two decimal places, 5.47. So uh, the correct answer is square root of 30. The approximate answer is 5.47. Let's take a look at another one. Okay, We know the length of this leg is square root of 5, and we know that the length of this leg is the square root of 10. If you don't know what to do, you can look at your little model over here and figure out what to do. If you need to pause, you can just simply click on the stop sign here, and it'll pause while you think about it. When you're ready to come back, you can just click on the go sign, and you can come back. All right, well, the number 5 plus the number 10 is 15. So the length of this side right here, the hypotenuse, the length of the hypotenuse here is the square root of 15. And the square root of 15, correct to two decimal places, is 3.87. Let's see if you can work this one. Click on the stop sign if you need to. OK, let's see how you did. Well, let's see. Uh, I know the length of the hypotenuse, and I know the length of one of the legs. So if I know the length of the hypotenuse, and I know the length of one of the legs. I, I take the length of the hypotenuse, and I subtract the length of the leg when it's under the square root sign. Notice, I'm not subtracting the square root of 16 from the square root of 25. I'm subtracting the number 16 from the number 25, and that gives me 9. So I have 20 minus 7 is 13. And 13? correct to two decimal places is 3.60. It's uh, an imperfect number. It's an irrational number, excuse me. And it uh, goes on forever. But we can know it correct to two decimal places. And so correct to two decimal places, it is uh, 3.60. And you might think, well, the zero isn't so necessary. And it is. It, that tells the person that, that's looking at this that you are giving them information correct to two decimal places. All right, if you need some extra time, just click on the stop sign. Then when you're ready, click on the go sign. All right, now, um, first of all, it says not to scale. And what that means here is that uh, this red triangle that I've drawn here is to just give you an idea that we're dealing with the right triangle. You can't come in here and measure that. Uh, it's to give you an idea. Pay attention to the math. That's what's important. The numbers are what are important. The little sketch, not to scale, is to just give you an idea that we're working with the right triangle. Okay, 
So, if you uh, need to click on the stop sign, click on the stop sign. Well, let's see. Uh, the number 25 minus the number 16 gives us the number 9. So the number 50 minus 20 gives us 30. And the square root of 30 is approximately 5.47, or that's what it is corrected to decimal places. Let's try another one. Okay. If you need some time, click on the stop sign. All right, let's see. I have this length right here. It's the square root of 12. And I have this length right here. It's the square root of 12. Well, this number 9 plus this number 16 gives me another number that I can then put under a square root sign. And that gives me the length of the hypotenuse. 12 plus 12 is 24. And so the length of the hypotenuse here is exactly, perfectly, the square root of 24. However, I can't know that perfectly. I can only know it correct to a certain number of decimal places. And so it turns out it's 4.89 corrected through decimal places. All right, here we have another one. And just like all the others, it's not to scale. It's just, just give you an idea. So uh, see if you can figure out the length of the hypotenuse. Click on the stop sign if you need to. OK, let's see how you did. Well, the number 9 plus the number 16 is going to give me the number 25. Stick it under a square root sign, and that gives me the length of the hypotenuse. Uh, so I have 15. The number 15 plus the number 20 is 35. The square root of 35 happens to be almost 6, because the square root of 36 is exactly 6. So the square root of 35 is 5.91, correct, to two decimal places. All right, we'll take a look at another example here. Click on the stop sign if you need to. All right, let's see how you did. Well, it turns out that 99, the length of my hypotenuse is the square root of, of uh, 99. So, and, and if, if you know that, it's uh, almost a perfect 10. So the length here is almost a perfect 10, but not quite. And then this length over here happens to be the square root of 49. Well, I, I look over here and I say this: the number 25 minus the number 16 will give me the number that I can stick under the square root sign. So 99 minus 49 gives me 50. Put 50 under a square root sign. And I have the square root of 50 is uh, corrected two decimal places, 7.07. Uh, .07. All right, well, I'll try another one here. Click on the stop sign if you need to. All right, we know the hypotenuse, and we know one of the legs. So the way we get to that is we take the number that's under the square root sign, subtract the number that's under the square root sign, and that gives us another number that we can put under a square root sign. So uh, 144 minus 44 gives us 100, and 100, the square root of 100, is exactly 10. Well, you should know, I hope, that 100, the square root of 144 is exactly 12. So this is 10 units long, and this is 12 units long. The longest line in any right triangle is always the hypotenuse. And so it should make sense that if this is 12, this would be 10. Uh, the numbers don't, don't add up incorrectly. In other words, you can look at that and go, OK, that makes sense that the longest line would be the hypotenuse. All right, look at this one. Click on the stop sign if you need to. OK, well, we know that the number 9 plus the number 16 gives us the number uh, for the length of the hypotenuse. We put it under a square root sign, and that, that helps us. So the length of this side is the square root of 1. Um, and the length of this side here is the square root of 4. So that means that the length of this side here is going to be the square root of 5, because 1 plus 4 is 5. Put that under a square root sign. And, and that gives us, well, you should be able to look at this and go, oh, the length of this side is really 1, and the length of this side is really 2. So the hypotenuse is 2.23. The longest line in a right triangle is uh, always longer than the either one of the legs. And so 2.23 is longer than 2, so we're in good shape. All right, see if you can figure this one out. Click on the stop sign if you need to. All right, let's see. Works like this. Um, we know the length of the two legs, so we're looking for the length of the hypotenuse. The square root of 15 plus the square, excuse me, fifth, the number 15 plus the number 30 is 45. 
and 45 put under a square root sign is approximately 6.70. That zero is important because it tells the person who's looking at this that they are dealing with uh, a number that's correct to two decimal places. It is also not to scale. So this is just a sketch uh, here to give you an idea. All right, see if you can figure this one out. Click on the stop sign if you need to. All right, let's see how you did. Well, the number 45 minus the number 12 gives us 33. We put 33 under a square root sign, and square root of uh, 33 is approximately 5.47, uh, correct to two decimal places. We know that this is going to be about correct because the square root of 36 is exactly 6, so it should make sense that our number is a little bit less than 6. Okay, see if we can figure this one out. Click on the stop sign if you need to. All right, let's see how you did. Uh, we know the length of the hypotenuse is the square root of 16. You happen to also know that that is exactly 4. And we know that the length of this line over here, this leg, excuse me, over here, is exactly the square root of 9, which happens to be 3. And 16, the number 16 minus 9, gives us 7. Put 7 under square root sign, and we wind up with, correct to two decimal places, the square root of 7 is 2.64. The length of this line here is 2.64. This length of the hypotenuse is 4, and the length of this leg is 3, and that seems to make sense because the hypotenuse is the longest line, the longest edge in a right triangle. All right, now, um, ooh, these aren't uh, under square root signs. You're going to have to do that yourself. Click on the stop sign and give it a whirl. See if you can figure out the length of the hypotenuse. All right, let's see how you did. Well, first, I can rewrite the length of 3 as the square root of 9, and I can re rewrite uh, the length of 5 as the square root of 25. Adding the number 9 to the number 25, I get the number 34. Put the number 34 under a square root sign, and that gives me, correct to two decimal places, 5.83. And that sounds about right because the square root of 36 is exactly 6, so it would make sense that my number is a little bit less than 6. All right, see if you can figure this one out. Click on the stop sign as necessary. All right, let's see how you did. Uh, well, first of all, I can rewrite 4 as the square root of 16, and I can rewrite 6 as the square root of 36. Now I can add the number 16, not the square root 16. I can add the number 16 to the number 36, and I get the number 52. Put the number 52 under a square root sign, and I wind up with, a, uh, correct to two decimal places, 7.21. I know that that's about correct because the square root of 49 is exactly 7, so it would make sense that my answer is a little more than 7. All right, here we know the length of the hypotenuse, and we know the length of one of the legs. See if you can figure out the length of the other leg. Okay, let's see uh, how this works. So uh, I can rewrite 7 as the square root of 49, and I can rewrite the length of 5 as the square root of 25. The number 49 minus the number 25 gives me the number 24. Put 24 under a square root sign, and that's the length of this leg perfectly. However, I, I can't deal with the square root of 24, can't measure that, so uh, what I can do is turn it into something that I do understand, and that is decimals in this case. So the square root of 24 is correct to two decimal places, 4.89. Okay, uh, click on the stop sign and try to solve this one. All right, let's see how you did. Well, I can rewrite the length of the hypotenuse here instead of calling it 12, I can call it the square root of 144. And the length of this leg was 10, so I can call that the square root of 100. Using my little model over here, if I know the length of the hypotenuse, I know that I can subtract the length, uh, uh, the, the number that's under the square root sign to get the length for the other leg when I put it under a square root sign. What that means is 144 minus 100 is the square root of 44. It's 44, put it under the square root sign, excuse me. So what do I know about the square root of 44? Well, I know it's almost 7 because the square root of 49 is exactly 7. So uh, correct the two decimal places, it's 6.63. All right, 
see if you can calculate the length of this leg. Well, I can rewrite the length of the hypotenuse of 10 under the square root sign of 100, and I can rewrite the length of this leg, 7, under the square root sign of square root of 49. Now I take 100, the number 100, I subtract the number 49, and I get the number 51. Put 51 under a square root sign, and the exact length, the perfect length of this leg right here, which is not drawn to scale, the perfect length of this leg right here is the square root of 51. And the square root of 51, correct to two decimal places, is 7.14. Sounds reasonable because the square root of 49 is exactly 7, so it would make sense that the square root of 51 is slightly more than 7.14. All right, so you wanted a little practice about dealing with how to use the a squared plus b squared equals c squared method. I'm uh, going to give you a couple of examples to work here, and uh, I'll show you how it works. So if you'll do this, here's the problem. Click on the stop sign, try to work it out, then come back, uh, click on the go sign when you're ready, and you'll see the problem worked out. So click on the stop sign. Okay, works like this. Let's see how you did. Well, A squared. This would be what we would call A, and this is what we would call B. doesn't have to be. It doesn't really matter which leg you call A or which leg you call B. And the hypotenuse, C, we don't know that one. So A squared plus B squared, that would be 2 squared. Well, that's just 4. And B squared, that's 6. 6 squared is 36. Now we add 4 plus 36, it gives us 40. However, 40 is what's equal to C squared. If we now, we now know that C squared is equal to 40. If we take the square root of 40 and we take the square root of c squared, that leaves us with just c, but it leaves us with the square root of 40. The square root of 40, you know, is going to be a little bit more than 6 because 6 times 6 is 36. So the fact that it's 6.32 equals c, c, the length of the hypotenuse, should make sense. Now, we have this leg that's 2 and this leg that's 6. 6.32 is longer than either of the two legs uh, in the right triangle, and that's as it should be. Okay, uh, give this one a whirl. Click on the stop sign. See if you can solve for the length of the hypotenuse. All right, let's see how you did. Well, it works like this. Uh, we'll call this A and we'll call this B. We don't know C. So um, 4 squared is 16 and b is 5, so 5 squared is 25. Adding 16 plus 25 gives us 41. 41 is equal to c squared. If we then want to know what c is equal to, we take the square root of both sides. So if I take the square root of 41, I get the square root of 41, and if I take the square root of c squared, I get c. Then crunching the numbers, coming up with Square root of 41 is 6.40, so the length of our hypotenuse over here, correct to two decimal places, is 6.40. All right, here's another one for you to try. See if you can uh, click on the or click on the stop sign. See if you can solve it. Okay, let's see how you did. Well, uh, let's see. We want to know the length of the hypotenuse. And we know the length of the two legs. So if we square A and we square B, add them together, it should give us C squared. And it looks like this. So 5 squared is 25, and 6 squared is 36. We now add 25 plus 36, and that gives us C squared, which happens to be 61. Take the square root of C squared, gives us C. Take the square root of 61, and it gives us the square root of 61. Finding the square root of 61, we find out that that is 7.81, which should come as no surprise. The square root of 64 is exactly 8. So the fact that this is almost 8, uh, that tells us that we're in the right, we're, we're doing okay. And we know that the hypotenuse is the longest leg, the longest uh, side in a right triangle, excuse me. So uh, it makes sense that this would be 7.8 if this is 6 and that's 5. It looks like a, a reasonable number. Okay, try this one, but here's the issue. You now know the length of the hypotenuse and you know the length of one of the legs. 
So you're going to have to do a little algebraic manipulation to the formula of a squared plus b squared equals c squared to solve this problem. Click on the stop sign, give it a whirl, and when you're ready, come back and click on the go sign, and I'll show you it worked out. Okay, let's see how you did. Well, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, but I don't know one of the a's or b's, so I'm going to move the b squared to the other side, uh, and when I pick up the b squared and I move it to the other side, it becomes a negative b squared. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared now becomes a squared equals c squared minus b squared. Plug in the numbers, and I wind up with 6 squared minus 4 squared is 36 minus 16 equals 20. So a squared equals 20. Take the square root of a squared and the square root of 20, and I wind up with a equals the square root of 20. A, then correct to two decimal places, is 4.47. And we can take a look at that to see if that makes any sense. If this length is 4.47 and this leg right here is 4, and the hypotenuse is the longest line in the right triangle, longest side in the right triangle, then that seems to make sense. All right, let's try another one here. Here we know the length of the hypotenuse and we know the length of a leg. Click on the stop sign, try to work it out. All right, let's see how you did. Well, first there's going to have to be some algebraic manipulation to the uh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared thing. So we know the length of the hypotenuse, and we know the length of one leg. Um, I'm just going to call this leg right here a. It doesn't really matter which one you call a or b. So what that means is that I'm going to put the c squared and the b squared on the same side of the equation because I don't know a. So if I move the b squared to the other side, it becomes a negative b squared. So I have had to algebraically manipulate my uh, Pythagorean theorem to be a squared equals c squared minus b squared. Well, c squared is 49 and b squared is 9. So 49 minus 9 is 40. Take the square root of a squared and the square root of 40 and I wind up with a is equal to the square root of 40. Finding the square root of 40, uh, we know that it's going to be a little bit more than 6 because the square root of 36 is exactly 6. And so we know that the square root of, or excuse me, the length of a is going to be 6.32, correct to two decimal places. All right, let's try another one. Click on the stop sign and try to solve it. Okay, let's see how you did. Works like this. Uh, we know the length of the hypotenuse here is 12, and we know the length of one of the legs of the right triangle is 10. We don't know what this one is, but using the Pythagorean theorem, we can manipulate this. So if we just call this length right here a, then uh, we can move b to the other side. When we move b to the other side, it becomes a negative b, and so we're left with a squared equals c squared minus b squared. Square the hypotenuse we get 144. Square the length of this leg, we get 100. 144 minus 100 is exactly 44, so a squared is equal to 44. Take the square root of a squared, and that leaves us with a, and take the square root of 44, and that leaves us with the square root of 44. That's the perfect length right here, exactly the square root of 44, but we can't deal with that, so we have to turn it into a decimal. And when we turn that into a decimal, it turns out it is 6.63. That shouldn't be too surprising because we know that the square root of one four, or we know that the square root of 49 is exactly seven. So the fact that this number is a little less than seven should come as no surprise. Also, when we look at this, does it make any sense? Well, one leg is 10, one leg is six. The hypotenuse is 12 and the hypotenuse is always the longest line in a right triangle. All right, let's take a look at another one and click on the stop sign if you need to. Okay, uh, I'm going to call this leg right here A and so that means I need to algebraically manipulate this so I'm going to move the B squared to the other side of the equation sign which makes it a negative B squared then. So I wind up with a squared equals c squared minus b squared. Uh, c squared is 100. 
and b squared is 25. 100 minus 25 is 75. Take the square root of a squared and that gives me a. Take the square root of 75 and that gives me 8.66. And I plug that in back over here. The length of a is 8.66. The length of this leg is 5. The length of the hypotenuse is 10. Seems to make sense. It's the longest line in the right triangle. Okay, let's uh, work on this one. All right, let's see how you did. Well, uh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It's c squared that we don't know. So we square uh, 4, which gives us 16, and we square uh, 3, which gives us 9. 16 plus 9 is 25, so c squared is equal to 25. Take the square root of c squared, gives us c. Take the square root of 25, and it gives us 5. You should have recognized or been able to recognize that this is the 3, 4, 5 triangle, and this triangle sketch is certainly not to scale. This line right here is, in all actuality, longer than this line right here, so we're dealing with a, a sketch that's not to scale. Don't be fooled by the drawing. Okay, let's take a look at one more, uh, or a few more, I guess I should say. Click on the stop sign if you need some extra time. All right, let's see how you did. And that is uh, a squared, 1 squared is 1, b squared is 4, 4 squared is 16, 1 plus 16 is 17. So c squared is equal to 17. Take the square root of c square, squared, and that leaves us with c. Take the square root of 17, we're taking the square root of both sides of the equation here. Take the square root of 17, and it should come as no surprise that our answer is going to be a little larger than 4, because you know that the square root of 16 is exactly 4. So C, correct to two decimal places, but not the perfect answer, is 4.12. So then we take a look at this here. Our hypotenuse is the longest line in a right triangle. And if uh, this is 1, uh, if this leg is 1 and this leg is 4, the fact that we're dealing with a hypotenuse of 4.12 should come as no surprise. It's a reasonable answer. Okay, and we'll take a look at uh, this one here. Click on the stop sign, give it a whirl. All right, let's see how you did. And that is uh, a squared is uh, 6 squared is 36, and b squared, that's 8 squared, that's 64. Adding 36 to 64, we get 100. So c squared is equal to 100. Take the square root of c squared, and that gives us c. Take the square root of 100, and that gives us 10. So it should come as no surprise to you that the longest line in this right triangle is the hypotenuse, it's 10. And perhaps you already recognize that this is just the 3, 4, 5 triangle dilated by a factor of 2. Uh, 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 4 is 8, and 2 times 5 is 10. All right, now your comments, questions, and suggestions are welcome, encouraged, and always appreciated. You may contact me at... Alan Morris at yahoo.com.